Welcome back to the Sports Mag Zone. We're shifting our focus now to track and field after Jamaica's subpar showing at the World Athletics Relays in the Bahamas. The Jamaica Athletics Administrative Association, the J3s, has released a statement addressing the team's performance. The statement reads, We share the consternation of the Jamaica track and field supporters at the showing of our athletes at the recently concluded World Athletics Relays in the Bahamas. As is the norm, prior to selection, athletes, coaches and agents were contacted with a deadline date regarding their availability. This is then passed to the selection committee. After selection and a team entry, we were plagued with withdrawals and had to continue with those available. Whilst we qualified for all the races, bar one, we seem to have had challenges which impacted our stellar performance. We cannot, however, speak specifically to these until we receive the reports from the management team, including medical and technical, who were on the ground. Now, heartiest congratulations to those who represented us as we strive to keep Jamaica's flag high, that's what they're saying, um, with the Olympic qualification on the line. Only the men's 4x100 relay team made it to a final and an automatic spot in Paris. The mixed 4x4 relay team, the women's 4x1 and the women's 4x4 all secured qualification through a second round of heats to be in the 14 teams that automatically qualified for the Olympic Games. The men's 4x400 team failed to secure automatic qualification and will now have to do so, will now have until June the 30th to do so. Track and field analyst and Sportsmax.tv editor Leighton Levy joins us on the phone. Uh, for this discussion. Leighton, welcome to the Sportsmax Zone. Can I ask you first if the statement coming out of the J3s is acceptable, understandable, um, given what Jamaicans saw in the Bahamas? Um, pretty much, because I think it's, it's not just one, or one issue that's the reason why the teams didn't perform as well as they would have liked. I think there are many there are many factors to what happened, and we've seen it evolve over the past few years. Wherein some of the bigger name athletes here in Jamaica have not made themselves available for for the world in, for the world relay championships um, for whatever the reasons are. And then when you look at the idea that they sent out invitations asking athletes about their availability, and the athletes that did. Um, make themselves available, then some of them pull out. So for example, elite performance um, had St Stacey and Williams and Kemba Nelson withdraw and Javon Dunkley and Nigel Ellis withdraw as well. I also did get a call from a couple of athletes overseas who said to me that they made themselves available, but then their names weren't presented um, to the selection committee. So it's, I don't think it's one, it's just one thing, but for, for what we know now, I think there is little else the J3s could have said given the circumstances because I think there are many factors that, that, go, that went into what we saw in the Bahamas from the Jamaicans. If you remember back at the first World World, World, World Race, we had you say in Mount Warren where you had Blake there that set a 4x200 world record and it seems to be broken. But subsequent to that, we haven't seen much of an interest um, from our more celebrated athletes in representing at the world relays. And I think it also has manifested itself in how relatively poorly we've been at the global championships in relays since that time as well. Mm -hmm. Is there an issue, Leighton, as far as you can see, about the understanding of the importance of it being a, a primary qualification event? Because um, I saw a couple of interviews, including one with uh, the um, highly um, respected Glenn Mills, and there appears to be an issue that some people are suggesting that it wasn't clear about the status of this meet requalification for the Olympics. Yeah, that's the thing. Look, if, if Glenn is, if what, is, what Glenn is saying is true, that's a communication issue between the coaches and the day three, because I was aware that where it is, we're going to be a, a qualifier event for, for the relay teams going into the Olympics in Paris this summer. But then, Jamie, he wasn't aware. 
I'm not sure if that's the case for other coaches, but if that is the case with Glenn Mills, then it would suggest that the J3s haven't done enough, a good enough job of you know, informing their coaches, all the coaches, especially those coaches with the elite athletes, of what was at stake for these World Rallies. Because there's a new dynamic. Huh? This was just announced, I think, like last year, that the World Rallies were going to be used as a qualifier for, for the Olympic Games. So if that was the case, and the coaches said, at least one coach says he did not know, there's a chance that other coaches did not know as well. And if that's the case, well, then, then that falls, I believe, on the j series, as they should be the ones that are reinforcing to the respective clubs where the athletes are training, that this is the, the reason why those athletes need to make themselves available for this event, mm -hmm. because of the automatic qualification process mm -hmm. that now goes directly through World Relays. So yes. I think... That, and what Glenn is saying is true, then I think that, that's a failure in communication yeah. uh, from where I sit. Yeah, I'm suggesting, though, Leighton, that it, it is a little hard to digest, though, uh, that some of these key people in the industry didn't know, because uh, a, lo a lot of us knew. Yeah, that's the thing. As I, as I said, as I said it's very to be believed, because I don't know where, if you are a coach and you're coaching elite athletes, whether it's Glenn Mills, whether it's MVP, whether it's Sprintech, wherever the club is, you should know what events your athletes need to be prepared for. I mean, we saw Nolas there. We saw uh, that that was keepers, just keepers in the commentary. Sorry, but we saw Femke Ball there. We saw that you know almost virtually a full strength Bahamian team there. So it's kind of implausible to, to 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 believe that our coaches here were among the best in the world, coaching some of the best athletes in the world. We're not aware that this was that an automatic qualifying event for the Olympic Games. So that's why I said if, then, if what Jen is saying is true, that is, that's how I coached it, because it's hard to believe that you would be coaching some world-class athletes, including a world champion, Antonio Watson, including, you know, Daniel Hughes, that you would not be aware that this is a, 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 an event that automatically qualifies your team for, for the Olympic Games. So, you know, it's, it's unless some, somebody comes out and says... Yeah, we did not tell Glenn or, you know, somehow establishing that what Glenn is saying is not true. One way or the other, it is perplexing and it is a little bit befuddling that coaches at this level would not be aware of what events that are the importance of this particular event to their coaches, to their athletes. Yeah, and of course, the, I guess the important issue here, because most of the teams have qualified... But the men's 4x4, which has a history of, of uh, medals globally, both at the Olympics and at the World Championship, um, still outside of the qualification zone they have until the end of June to achieve that. But they'll probably have to put a team together to run 258 or somewhere in that region. Um, do you think they mm -hmm. will get that done? Well, they first have to find an event where they can do it. <laughs> and that's the thing. Unless there's a diamond league meet where they they make a four by four relay team available, and then ensuring that you have your best four by four team athletes ready to, to compete, then it's gonna be it's gonna be a challenge because you know the the national championship is coming up in June, at the end of June, just just mere days before the deadline. So can they put together a team? Because it's not just about putting together a team, you know. It's about finding. Which athletes are available for whatever meet that they're going to find? Because to put together that team, they need to put together at least four athletes in good, in good standing, in good shape, in power fitness to go to a meet and then compete. Because remember, each of these athletes have different agents, so that we book for different meets across the globe as they try to get race up for their for national championships and, of course, subsequently the Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. So it's, there are so many different moving parts. Is about how do you get that team together in the same place at the same meet and whether or not they are in a meet that they are able to do it. So it's going to be a challenge. Yeah, well, lately we're going to leave it there. Um, we're pretty much out of time, but this is a story that has gripped the Jamaican track and field uh, fraternity for the past few days, and we just thought that we'd get your take on it. Thanks, man. We'll talk again soon. Thank you, guys. Okay, we'll be back to put the wrap on the Sports Night Zone for this Thursday on the other side of the break. We'll <laughs>